part two of airbrushing basics. We're down at the spray booth. We're gonna take a look at air, air sources for your airbrush. How do you get that air into the airbrush to shoot the paint out? So we're gonna look at the different methods you can use to propel paint out of your airbrush. Things such as propellant cans, uh, hobby compressors like this guy here, industrial commercial compressors, compressors with air tanks, uh, air tanks themselves. So let's get down to it and take a look at getting air into your airbrush. The first type of propellant we're gonna look at today are these propellant cans. So these are basically canned air. It's like buying a can of spray paint and not having any paint in it. So it's basically the propellant that'll push the paint out of your airbrush. And when you go to the store for your first airbrush and you buy a set, you can buy a set that'll contain a can of propellant and an air regulator and so forth. This Badger 350 is a beginner set that has everything in it you need to go. So I'm gonna open this up. We'll take a look here. You can see it's got the propellant can right here. It's got an air hose. It's got an air regulator for the can and there's the airbrush. So what I'll do is I'll take the air hose out. I'll take the propellant out. I'll take the regulator out and leave the hose there. So if I take this can of propellant and I take the regulator cap and always make sure the regulator cap's backed off so that you don't get airflow when you screw it on. So I'll screw this cap onto the can. There you go, it's on there nice and tight. And as I turn down this screw, you'll notice that air starts to flow out of it. Now, the more I screw that top down, the more air flows out so I can adjust the pressure. Now, there are advantages to these cans and disadvantages. One of the advantages is these contain an inert gas, which means there's no moisture in it, which eliminates any moisture in your line, so you don't have to worry about the airbrush spitting water out. That's a good thing. There are disadvantages to these cans, one of which is, and if you could feel this, these cans get really cold as you spray. And as they get cold, the pressure in the can drops, so that you're gonna be constantly adjusting the valve at the top, plus your paint flow. So, good and bad. They also can get very costly. If you're just doing one or two models, yeah, you can get away with the cans, but if you anticipate doing a lot of painting, you're gonna to wanna to think about investing in something a little more cost effective. Now, as far as these cans getting cold, I'll show you a little trick that I do, or always did when I used them. I would take a pot out of the kitchen like this, and I would fill it with warm water. And then I would put, as I sprayed, I put my can in the warm water, and it keeps the can from getting too cold too fast. You don't want it to be hot water, just warm water. So, something to think about. And the next thing we'll look at will be hobby compressors. Let's talk about air compressors for airbrushing. When you go look at compressors or you decide to buy yourself a compressor, you need to ask yourself three questions. The first is, how much capacity do I need? In other words, when you're doing something like we do hobby-wise where you're painting models and things like that, you're looking at 15 to 25 pounds per square inch or PSI necessary. That's not too bad. When you look at industrial tools like nail guns and things like that, they'll take up to 90 pounds per square inch. They need something that's really gonna drive. That's what these big compressors are for. The second thing you need to think about is noise. How noisy can I be? Um, small hobby compressors, will have a decibel range about 40 to 50, whereas industrial compressors can be over 100 decibels, so they're loud. Third thing is electricity. Do I have a source of electricity? Can I plug the thing in? So those are the three questions. As far as capacity goes, or pounds per square inch, as I said, we're doing hobby products. So small hobby type compressors are great. You can get a hobby compressor like this Badger. I've had this guy for almost 40 years now. It's my go-to, never had a problem with it, knock wood. It's got a regulator and a pressure gauge on it that I put on there. These you can buy either with or without a reserve tank. So this is your best bet when it comes to hobby type applications is a hobby air compressor. Badger, like I say, this is a Badger. They've made them for years, Pache. There's various other manufacturers. So a good hobby compressor will do everything we wanna do. These bigger compressors can be used, but like I say, the, the biggest downfall of the bigger compressors that you'd buy at a home improvement store is the noise. When I turn this on, it is really loud. I mean, it'll shake the rafters here. So it's got a good reserve tank. If I wanna use this, what I do is I fill it up and then I bleed off and work off the reserve tank instead of running it all the time. Something that helps with noise is automatic shutoff. My Badger here has an automatic shutoff. So when I'm running it and I'm spraying, when I stop spraying, the compressor shuts off. 
when I start spraying again, it kicks back on. So that cuts down the noise level and the wear and tear on the compressor. So sometimes when it comes to electricity, I know this sounds silly, but you need electricity for these. Some folks don't have that resource. In other words, maybe they're spraying somewhere where there's no electricity. You can use an air tank. You can use a CO2 or an NO2 air tank. Um, there's positives and negatives there. Obviously there's no moisture in that inert gas, that helps, but you have to be filling it constantly. You have to be running back and forth to, you know, the place you get them filled. They're kind of dangerous in the sense that you can suffocate if you don't ventilate your area well enough and you're using CO2 or NO2, nitrogen or carbon dioxide, it sucks the oxygen out of the air. So if you don't ventilate well, there's just a slight chance you could suffocate yourself. The third thing is with an air tank, if it falls over and the top breaks off, it'll turn into a projectile, like a torpedo, and just shoot across the room. So they have to be mounted really firmly and strapped in somewhere to use. So those are the things to think about. There are a few other options that you need to look at when you buy a compressor. You need to have a braided air hose. You can't use a, a small vinyl air hose like you would use on a can of Propel. You have to have a heavier duty airline. You have to put a moisture trap on the airline. That's what this guy right here is. Or have a moisture trap attached to the compressor. Speaking of the compressor, you also need to buy a regulator and a pressure uh, valve or a pressure readout on it. So as you can see on my Badger here, I have the regulator, which is this guy here, and a pressure readout, pressure gauge. I also have a quick disconnect on here for my air hose. I put that on so I can snap my air hose on and off if I'm using multiple air brushes. So my, my recommendation, if you're buying an air compressor for hobby use, is to check out Badger, Pache, any of your favorite manufacturers and see what they have. Because like I say, I've had this compressor for 40 years and I've never had a problem with it, knock wood, and it's just a great way to go. So that's compressors. You gotta make sure you buy yourself the one that puts out enough air for you, that has a good noise level. You can buy silent compressors, but they're a lot more expensive than a standard compressor and electricity. So that's air compressors. Let's do a quick review of the air sources or the propellant sources we looked at for airbrushes. The first thing we looked at were these cans of Propel or canned air. Positive is there's no moisture in there. It's an inert gas, so you don't get a lot of moisture in your lines. But the disadvantages are as this can, as you use it, it gets cold and the pressure drops. So you're constantly adjusting the paint flow and the pressure valve. The other thing is they're not very cost effective. You're going to go through a lot of them if you do a lot of modeling. So by the time you, you know, you've bought 10 or 12 of these, you could have bought an air compressor. So something to think about. Second thing we talked about were air tanks, like CO2 and nitrogen air tanks. They're okay, they don't require electricity, there's no moisture in them, so that's a positive. But the negative is they will cost you a lot of money in the long run because you're constantly filling it. And there are danger aspects to it. The suffocation aspect, where if you don't ventilate well, it can suck the oxygen out of your, air, your room here. And the fact that if it drops and the top breaks off, it becomes a propellant or it becomes a projectile or shoot across your room. So there are danger aspects to air tanks, something to think about. What I recommend and what I think is the best source of air for airbrushing, especially for hobbies, are air compressors. And in particular, hobby type air compressors like this Badger or Apache or whoever your favorite airbrush brand is. They all make them. They're really great products. They're very cost effective. They're not very noisy. The hobby compressors are a lot quieter than big compressors. And like I say, if you really want something quiet, you can buy a silent air compressor. So my recommendation is if you're airbrushing hobbies, models, things like that, look at hobby air compressors. Can't go wrong.